I passively looked at XPX's cell and the camera was confirmed to be oddly angled to where the shapes would have made no sense whatsoever to the people viewing through the camera. That would be if anyone act actually was viewing them or cared about shadow shapes. Double XL was looking out the window at something, I guess watching the sunset and the rest still all the male gender. If there was women or children here, it would be in a separate wing of all a similar setup, but I've seen no pictures and not a single indication, so I wonder if it's simply people seeing things or maybe there's another prison or area on the island that's not a part of the sanitarium ward or whatever this thing is. Okay, that's enough, the doctor said. I came to sit down. I guess it's time for the questions to begin. All right, Doc, what do they want to know? I asked. What does who want to know? The doctor replied and then scribbled some notes. I only mean what questions do you have for me today? I replied. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, today's questions, the doctor responded. First, we start with the baseline questions and the doctor asks me an easy one. What do I see? I tell him that I see a very well-kept lab to monitor sleep studies and a tired and thirsty doctor asking me easy questions. He mentioned to me that I'm very observant and that he was actually both tired and thirsty. With that, he said he was going to get himself a cup of coffee. He offered me a cup, but I declined. I would take a cup of water, though. I always loved the flavor of these rusty pipes infused. Mm -mm. Next question, he begins. Where do you see yourself in five years? Well, I looked at him unflinchingly. He apologized and said, Well, I told the other doctors that would be a stupid joke. Okay, now the real third question. I noticed he skipped the second question, or was that second question really, or was he just getting his numbers, really, was he really getting his numbers confused? This place must even get to them after a while. I decided to let it go. This question was a new question that I had never heard before. Is there anything different about the room today than from yesterday? I looked around for a minute and had a few suspicions that they would plant something on purpose to test me. Either that or maybe they didn't know and were seeking help because they knew or suspected I might be better at this than them. Regardless, I got up to look around to do my due diligence. I started with where I came in and the door looked fine. The monitors looked fine and I realized he probably meant was anything added or missing. The chairs were all there. The beds were all there. And I passed by a photograph at somebody's lab desk of a wife and child that seemed to be out of place. Is this it? Is this it? I asked. No, he responded. Well, maybe. I don't know who put that there. As I looked up, a discreet webcam was turned on, and all the others were off. I moved my eyes from the camera to the light and back to the camera. After that, I finished my sweep, and he said... And then I said that the picture was all I noticed that was different. How should I know? Maybe that camera was always on. It was probably X9X since that camera was conveniently had an angle of the door. So he had his own surveillance going. Oh well. I assume he wasn't going to make a move unless someone actually had nearly enough resources to act on their own. And then he could be the tipping point. So I was simply going to leave him alone. Fourth question, said the doctor. What do you see when you close your eyes? And please be specific. I took a sip of my lead pipe infused water, closed my eyes, and tried to relay the message to him. I couldn't relay everything though. I saw 9x watching us, didn't relay that. I saw a short horn faded red monster deep in this place laughing. I relayed that one. I saw the security staff getting eaten by seal mutants, didn't relay that one. I saw me getting punched in the face, so I relayed that. He noted that I always say that one, and I responded with, well, it's always been a metaphor for my headaches, migraines, etc., so he put a little note to that next to that one. I see people in Chester suits dancing and puppets waggling. I also see people suffering and me being helpless, and that's it. He wrote down the people in Chester suits dancing and puppets dancing and some other stuff I couldn't figure out. Final bonus question, the doctor said. The red faded 
The faded red monster with the nubs. It come with a name? I thought it was weird because they usually acted like the stuff wasn't real, so either they were playing along or something has changed. I don't talk to him, Doc, and he stays the way, way the hell away from me, I responded. The doctor said fair enough and good talks, and I took a big drink from my water, set the glass on the table, and walked to the door. With three knocks, the orderlies in black light observant attire appeared to escort me. They did this without searching me, leading me past the screams and back to my cubby. Chapter 10, Night, Day 1 Back safely in my cub now with my cub mates. I could see the double XL and XPX were okay, which made me feel good. I told both of them that everything's fine and everything's going to be fine like I always said. XPX kind of let out a disapproving grunt. Double XL seemed to be relieved a little bit. I knew I could say that because even the people here were so damn overconfident that even if they were listening, they would think that I was saying that as a false sense of hope to the inmates to keep them okay. That's why I was okay with XPX's response. As long as they don't show too much hope, management here wouldn't be concerned too much. I think in reality, though, someone in management is concerned because those questions were different than before. Someone in management is actually believing me now, or at least curious. Some screaming turned to maniacal laughter up the hall somewhere, and what sounded like banging into a wall. That coincided with me imagining a red monster smashing someone's face over and over again. Double XL looked away, and XPX down as always. But I looked into the hall. Moments later, the orderlies, basically invisible at night, rushed by to get a lifeless body and take it out to the meat and seals for a late night supper. His head had been smashed in, but there was nobody else in his cubby. He had done it to himself. Maybe done with the insanity and maybe partially so he didn't have to get eaten alive. We got to hear the stupid fat seals laughing and mockery now instead. Damn seals are annoying. We sat the rest of the night in silence, nobody wanting to speak and no other screaming. Terror and torment taking a break for a little while. All three of us drifted off without realizing it and slept. Chapter 11 Morning Presence Day 2 We woke in the morning to new things in our cubbies that weren't there the night before. Our cubby had a spiral bound notebook and a three ring binder and some writing utensils. XPX got a stainless steel spork, a spoon and a fork put together. He had no idea what to do with the spork, so he put it in his shoe sideways along his ankle for now. I handed Double XL the spiral bound notebook. It was labeled Double XL. And all the writing utensils so he could choose out of all of them. He chose the crayons for reasons unknown. I imagine this was to keep up his facade of being simple. Or maybe he really liked crayons or children. I have no idea. This also begged the question of why the hell they would have crayons on an insane asylum prison island. But whatever. I got the gel pen. It was the pressurized kind that wouldn't blow up if you were on an airplane. Very cool. Of course, this was probably a test to see if we would start writing stuff on these and then they would take them for analysis or maybe they wanted us to think that so we wouldn't write anything in them at all. Or maybe they knew we would think that. Hmm. Whatever the case, Double XL had already come to the conclusion to begin with. He began with the child version of a house. The one that's two vertical lines, a horizontal line at the bottom and then two 45 degree angle lines at the top. Okay, I thought to myself. I'm going to start bawling if I watch him do this, so I got to my own three ring binder. First, I looked up and XPX was still staring down at the floor now with his spork in his shoe. Well, I take that back. He had taken the spork out and was watching us in the reflection of it. I guess that wasn't triggering what he saw when he looked up. I guess he could look up without seeing his guilt. I waved at XPX with a smile and whispered, Hey, 2X. And he looked at me and then I pointed. This made Double XL very happy, and he waved at XPX also and showed him the coloring of his house. This made XPX face palm, which was pretty funny. Double XL ignored it and then went back to meticulously adding which animals he would want to this house. There was a fence, and him and a girl and kids, and the whole nine yards. 
Double XL would not be deterred by XPX's face palming at all, apparently. Now I had to figure out what to do with mine. <laughs>